Hi, I'm currently on the ferry to Texel for the biggest birding weekend in the Netherlands. The Dutch Birding Autumn Migration Weekend on Texel. Three days of birding in one of the spots that is the best for rare birds in the Netherlands. There was a little stint reported, but it seems to be gone. It's a six minute drive. Let's hope it won't be flushed. Willem is joining me and we have three goals for the weekend. The first one is to see as many different species as possible. Last year I saw 107 species. This year we're targeting 120, which is ambitious, but we're going for it. And the second is to find a bird as rare as possible, because whoever finds the rarest birds wins a pair of binoculars. And the third one is to add some species to my film list. And therefore I'm targeting species like olive back pipit, red throated pipit, European sarin and Lapland bunting. Let's go! Our weekend list started as soon as we drove off the ferry. From the car we picked up some common species like jackdaw, grey leg geese and common gull. While driving with our car window open we picked up some species on call like blue tit, red wing and song thrush. Hey, go, go, peak. Yeah. Oh, peak. We then saw a group of lapwing standing on a field. As groups of lapwings can hold some mega rare birds sometimes, we checked them thoroughly. Saw the cry. But there was nothing rare amongst these lapwings. Still no one? Yep. We then checked another field with lapwing. Here we did see some other species, like a golden plover. There were also some songbirds in the field, like these starlings, and also some other birds which were too far away to identify. On a field here next to us, yesterday a possible Wilson snipe was found, which would be a new species for the Netherlands. We are checking it now, but we can't find any snipe that resembles the bird from yesterday. We also have a backlight and the bird. Find it here. But we did pick up some first species for our weekend list, like uh, common linnet, skylark, uh, wood pigeon, stock dove, uh, grey heron, uh, and of course the uh, common snipe, uh, lapwing, golden plovers, and the like. Let's see if we can find the snipe, but I'm afraid it's not to be that easy. We couldn't relocate the possible Wilson snipe. We did, however, saw some common species, like common snipe, skylarks, meadow pipits. A grey heron sat in the back of the field, some linnets, and some doves, like a wood dove and a group of stock doves. Just picked up a little egret, which is always nice. We are now leaving the spot of the possible Wilson's snipe, and we are going for the rosy starling in Den Burg. During our drive to Den Burg, we picked up another bunch of common species, like common kestrel, mallard, Magpie, Great Sit, House Sparrows, a Collar Dove, some Goldfinches, and then we arrived in Den Burg. It didn't take us long before we saw the Rosy Starling, which was enjoying a jar of peanut butter. The Starling didn't look all that healthy and was sometimes sleeping in the open. I then checked what was wrong with my action cam. It turned out that deleting the files via my laptop wasn't enough and I had to format the card entirely. But I could give some instructions to other birders where to see the starling. After that I went back and I could get some more shots. And now at the field where the American golden plover was seen these past days. It hasn't been reported today, but there is a large group of golden plovers present here. But sadly a northern goshawk flushed everything. So now they are sitting too far away to be checked, so maybe later in the day we have more luck. We did however score some more birds for a weekend list, like these common shell ducks, a greenfinch, some cormorants, a ruff, a grey plover, a dunlin, and some common ring plovers. At the next spot we tried to find the ruddy shell duck. We did see a common buzzard, a Eurasian coot, great crested grebe, and barnacle geese, but sadly we couldn't find the ruddy shell duck. 
We also saw some other species, like some tufted ducks, a curlew, some gadwall. We heard a reed bunting, saw some widgeons, saw some northern shovelers, saw a great black back gull, and some white wagtail. Just picked up a nice tame snow bunting, and also some long tailed tits, which is uh, very nice. We are now going to look for the long billed dowitcher that has been present here for a couple of weeks. A tame snow bunting is always a great subject for bird photography. As the species is an arctic breeder, they aren't used to humans, so when they are alone they are pretty tame, but when they are in groups they can be pretty skittish. To get the best shots I laid down on the ground, but sadly the path the bird was foraging on was sloping down, so I couldn't get quite at eye level. We then checked the tidal mud flats outside of the dike and scored some salt water species. On the mud flats, we picked up almost every wader we could think of, like avocets, both godwits, sandling, etc. But the longbill dowitcher wasn't there yet. We have to wait for low tide for that one to show up. So now we're going after some songbirds. At the entrance, we directly scored a moorhen and a robin, two species added to the list. I also picked up a chaffinch, which Willem heard a bit later. Here I saw a sparrowhawk flying by, so I shouted to Willem, Sparrowhawk! Luckily he got onto the bird and we could count it. We walked further along this path, hoping to score some wood warblers and other forest species. Sadly, it was a bit quiet here, but we did score some birds for our weekend list, like Great Spotted Woodpecker, Chiff Chaff, Wren, a blackbird, and a black cap. We've picked up our first bunch of common songbirds like a black cap, chiff chaff, chaffinch, etc. We're now going to try a barred warbler. There were a lot of birders present at the spot of the barred warbler, but it turned out it hadn't been seen for over an hour already. Just picked up species number 77, the little grebe. When we were at the barred warbler, we saw that it was a hopeless situation, so we moved on and we got a uh, siskin and a dunnock and now the little grebe. 77 it is, let's go. We checked the entire area, but it turned out the little grebe was just foraging next to the closest reeds. The American Golden Plover has just been reported. It's a six minute drive, let's hope it won't be flushed. Luckily, when we got there, the American Golden Plover was still in view. Finally, I got the chance to film the species. It turned out the species was pretty easy to pick out amongst the European golden plovers with its all black and white plumage. We weren't the only birders who rushed to see this bird after it was reported. Hey, hey. Also note the conspicuous eyebrow stripe and the slightly smaller size compared to the European golden plover in front. On our way to our next stop we scored a mute swan. The American Golden Plover was a success, and we've just checked the Wannessee and saw some eared grebes. And we also heard that the barn owl was visible in the shed, so we're going to try that next. But before we headed there, we decided to check out a report of a common sandpiper nearby, just to make sure it wasn't a spotted sandpiper, the American equivalent of the common sandpiper. But sadly, the bird was gone. Alongside the road, we picked up a great white egret and a wimbrel. Good species for October, so that's nice. 
We're now in a height, but we can't find anything new here. There was a little stint reported, but it seems to be gone. Got the bar now in the shed behind us. We had driven by this spot earlier in the day, but didn't find it then, because there were some machines busy clearing out the ditch. Now we did see them. Only a wing, but we were happy with it. Later, it turned out the playback was used to lure out these birds. And although I sometimes use playback to lure in groups of songbirds, I definitely wouldn't do that to disturb roosting owls in the day. Our next stop was a spot from which we could view two freshwater lakes on the south side of the island. Here we scored Goldeneye and Common Pochard. We are now at the southern side of the island called the Horse Meertjes and here we picked up Goldeneye, Pochard and Water Rail. The long-billed Dowager has also been reported in the meantime, so that is our next target. Just picked up a ring ousel, species 87, nice. These reed beds are the only possible spot to score bearded reed legs, which we did. We then quickly drove back to the north side of the island for the long billed Dowager. In the meantime, water levels had dropped significantly and more birds were foraging on the mudflats. I was sitting at the end of the pier to get as close to the birds as possible and to have the lowest possible vantage point. While sitting on the pier, I noticed the nearby foraging spotted redshank, new for the weekend list. It also didn't take long before we saw the long-billed dowager, foraging among some blacktails and bar-tailed godwits. I was very happy with these shots of this winter plumage bird, because now I both have a summer plumage bird on video and a winter plumage bird on video. I also noticed a nearby swimming cormorant. Yes, long-billed Dowitcher also in the pocket, and we also saw a spotted red shank. Nice. Now we're going to try the barred warbler once more. There were now only a couple of birds present, and the sun was setting fast. Sadly, we dipped on the barred warbler, but maybe we have more luck next time. We're now going to get something to eat, and then uh, there are some lectures tonight, so we're going to enjoy that. And then we'll see you tomorrow. Good morning and welcome to day two of the Dutch burning weekend. Yesterday we ended at 90 species. And this morning we started with parking a car in the forest. And uh, in the dark we walked all the way up uh, the north tip of the island. And there we've picked up four species already. A grey wagtail, kingfisher, uh, chatty swabbler and brambling. So 94 it is. We would like to get above 110 today, so tomorrow we only have to pick up some species over a sea during a sea watch. We're now going to try the Bart Warbler again. Turned out we were lucky this time, because when we arrived at the spot of the Bart Warbler, it had just been seen. Hier ook komt omhoog, iets aan links van de stam. In contrary to most of my other observations of Bart Warbler, this one showed incredibly well eating from blackberries. Awesome, we finally got to see the bard wobbler and also two Richard's pipits flew overhead and they called very loudly. Another birder uh, recorded it and hopefully on that recording you can hear me shouting Grote Pieper, which is Dutch for Richard's Pippet. We'll see. Hey, Grote Pieper. Yeah. Here. Twee. We walk back along the path near the campsite. A very exciting path, as we have the feeling a mega rare bird will be seen here in the future. This time, however, we only found a fire crest. Because during the ditch burning weekends, a lot of birders check the gardens on the north tip of the island, we decided to only check the south side of the first garden. Here we saw another fire crest and a gold crest. And although it was already 10 o'clock in the morning, 
still a lot of thrushes came flying out from the sea and landed in the bushes. Also, we noticed a couple of birds leaving the bushes, like this brambling. Okay. Yes, we picked up a rough-legged buzzard. It went too fast to get any footage, but we are very happy with it. It's a pretty scarce species these last years. Sadly, the bird flew by too fast for me to film it. And that was a shame, because now not everybody believed our observation to be correct. But in the meantime, I've bought a new lens and camera with which I could film these kind of observations. So, we've finally seen a common stone chat, species 100 in the pocket. We're now going to do another long hike for hopefully a wind chat. After a long hike on which we found the wind shed, but failed to find a jack snipe, we are now back at the forest, and here we just heard a half inch flying overhead. And a tree pipit, which can be one of two species, the tree pipit or a lot of back pipit. I have to check my recording to see if I can determine the exact species, but nonetheless one extra for the weekend list. Sadly, my action cam started recording a bit too late, and that's why I've only recorded the end of the call, and I've copied that multiple times. In our opinion, it's just a common tree pipit. So after we've ended our five and a half hour hike, we decided it was time to do some birding from the car. And our first stop is the ruddy shell duck that has been present on the island for a couple of years now. And when we got there, we couldn't find it at first, but we did see great white fronted geese and Marsh Harrier, two new birds for the weekend list. And then I also found the reddish shell duck. Nice. We're now going to look for tree sparrow, northern wheat here, and black tern. Tree sparrows. At this location, some people walked by and asked what we were doing. We told them we were looking at birds, and they seemed to be really surprised. <coughs> After some searching, I finally found the black tern, but it was incredibly far away. Luckily for us, there was also a hunting hen hairy present, a new bird for the weekend list. And then I saw this crow which looked like the hooded crow at first, but it turned out to be a hybrid. We've just picked up the black tern, and we also saw a hen harrier, and then I saw a crow which looked like a hooded crow, but it turned out to be a hybrid. So we're at 109 species. Let's see what species 110 will be. We've just checked out the spot where a northern weirier was seen. Suddenly we couldn't find it. We did hear a pipit, that could either be a rock or water pipit, and the habitat is typical for water pipit, but that species is very scarce on Tessel, where the rock pipit is pretty abundant. And as it landed in the vegetation, we couldn't get a fuse of the plumage, so sadly, can't count it. We then checked the field with gulls for the Mediterranean gull. We've just picked up a Mediterranean gull, species 110. 
it said amongst a group of other gulls in the field. But sadly, there are a lot of uh, small planes flying over the island, so everything keeps getting flushed, as uh, happened with this group. When I got it inside, uh, I told Willem, he saw it, and then everything flew up, and we can't relocate it anymore. So sadly, no footage of this uh, winter plumaged uh, bird. I would have loved to get that plumage on film, but sadly, I failed. But it's on the list for the weekend, and we're now going to try a yellow-browed warbler. Finally picked up a yellow-browed warbler, species 111. But in this uh, part of the forest, the path was so small and the foliage so thick that I couldn't get any footage of the bird. But luckily, I've filmed one in the past. We're now going to bird on the south side of the island. Uh, we're hoping to pick up some last forest species like jay and tree creeper, and also maybe northern wheat ear or barn swallow. Let's see how high we can get today. We parked at the entrance of the campsite and saw some barn swallows flying above the Scots pine. However, we dipped on the northern weed ear and then it was time to get some dinner. We drove through the forest with our windows open in the hope to score some extra forest species. At the campsite we picked up barn swallow, but we couldn't find the northern weed ear, nor could we find the jay or tree creeper. So we're stuck at 112 species, but the 120 species mark is coming closer and tomorrow we're going to do a sea watch, so hopefully we can pick up those last 8 species. We're now gonna get something to eat and then we have the lectures tonight, we'll see you in the morning. Traditionally, on Saturday night there is a mystery bird competition. 30 photos of birds from which you have to identify the right species. I got 15 right, but winner Kun Stork Got 20. Good morning and welcome to the third and last day of the Dutch burning weekend. We've uh, just conducted a sea watch and although numbers were a bit disappointing, we did get seven new species. So we are at 119. So we have to find the last species ourselves and the best bet is with uh, field fair, jay or tree creeper. Let's see if we can find one of those and end at 120 species. Despite the force 7 winds directly out of sea, numbers of seabirds were a bit disappointing. But we did pick up some new species, like some northern gannets, some red throated divers, and some Jaegers, of which we could identify at least some parasitic Jaegers. We also picked up some groups of common scoters and I found a little gull and there were also some terns but we couldn't identify it on the species level it was either an arctic or common tern. After a while more and more birds joined in but sadly it also started raining. The last species we saw was a sooty shearwater, a species I definitely need some better footage of. We were then about to head into the forest again to search for the jay or tree creeper, but then some dolphins were reported on the southeastern side of the island, so we rushed there. Sadly, I didn't see a dolphin with certainty, only some porpoises. While we were checking for the dolphins, a dodora was reported, so we decided to head in that direction to see a 120th species. But while we were driving away, Willem shouted, possible weed here, they're on a pole. And there it was, our 120th bird of the weekend. Success! Now onto the dodora, hopefully we can film that also. Of course, in this time of year, we checked the weed ear for a possible isobelene or desert weed ear, but 
it turned out to be just a common northern weed ear. We then arrived at the field where the Dororo was seen. Luckily, this one was easily found. Now a Eurasian bittern has been reported sitting in a roadside in a ditch and uh, that is a species I would really like to film. So we're heading that way. It's a three minute drive. And with this species, sadly, there comes an end to our ditch burning weekend 2024. We've ended at 122 species, we thought. But then it turned out we forgot to note the bar tailed godwit, so that is species 123. Don't forget to subscribe, please leave a comment and hit the like button, and we'll see you next time.